It's not a bad. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello world! Welcome again. We're very glad to be back today for this holiday episode. A fun episode, we can say. Yes. Let's keep it light. So, uh, I would like to dig a bit uh, in the interview process, but not all the process. Let's understand uh, from your perspective when and how to pick the project of a guy, of a candidate, like strength point in the code and the weak points. It's a very interesting topic. So as you said, we cannot cover now in this video how to interview, but to verify that this person writes good code. You open a yeah, studio, you import the code. So well, what's the first thing that you watch? The top thing I'm looking for is to see a good dependency injection foundation. Dependency injection, man. No. I, if I don't see this, uh, I, I would call it a design pattern mm -hmm. uh, at the highest level. If I don't see this in a code base, for me, it's a very big code smell. Mm -hmm. If you don't handle your objects, if your object graph, then I think you've lost control of your dependencies and it's a very big minus for me. So that's the first thing I'm looking for. I will say from my side, yes. it's since I'm a fan of the clean architecture called also Hexagon. I like the clean architecture because it's also giving you the perspective of a clean uh, mind you already organized. Last time we did the feature together, do you remember? I was doing the presentation layer, you were working on data layer. We did it well, so when we had to combine those two layers, it was very easy. It was pretty like an easy job to do it. So if a project that I see has already the package uh, or feature, any split that can lead me to the understanding of the candidate of using domain data layer presentation layer is already a good start, let's say. So basically you're saying a good architecture allows for parallel work. Correct. Even if nine, nine women doesn't do a kit in one month. What is, let's mention another point. So now we have the best injection, clean architecture. Unit testing. Whoa. And this goes very hand in hand with dependency injection because in unit testing, basically, you have to replace some of your dependencies with a mock dependency or with uh, any other type of test double that you want. But um, if I don't see unit tests, I consider that you don't value them so much. So it also shows to me that you are maybe in a rush or you think that uh, manual testing can cover your cases. But there has been a lot of times in the, in the past years that we have had cases that a unit test found an issue or pinpointed the problem way before we had any idea what was going on. Yeah. And the best benefit for me when you have good unit tests is that you can refactor safely. So now you can refactor this part of code. As long as your tests keep being green, you know that you didn't mess it up. Next point, do you have a next point? I do. Uh, the usage of uh, retrofit of the common framework that uh, we're using, uh, for example, for test, uh, I expect uh, uh, JUnit. I don't expect that the person will create from zero a network framework. I mean, it would be good, but also strange from my side. So it means that probably it didn't work in many teams. It will raise a red flag, say, hmm, this would be a starting point for a question during the meeting because after it, probably you don't just watch the code is very bad, yes, but there should be a follow-up with the candidate, no? You explain the code. Why didn't you go to retrofit, for example? Hmm. It's an interesting point. I wouldn't particularly say this, but I don't disagree with you. Rx Java instead of flows, for example, would be like strange. Hmm. Rx Java, hmm? Rx Kotlin, Java instead of Kotlin, XML instead of Compose nowadays. Some people still use Volley. Oh, there are. The vintage. I the like vintage. It. Old school guys. Ah. Do you believe that if you see a Java code base or an XML code base is a problem? Java code base, yes. Okay. Java XML. Code base. XML, not sure. Not sure. Okay. Java, yes. So we have covered dependency injection, testing. We have also covered framework uh, and the architecture. The architecture. So now we're reaching to the point of the, we have the basic, we have a lot of fundamentals. Let's go now to the more, let's say, special cases. What I would put here is something that many people may not even pay too much attention at because usually today it comes out of the box. Abstracting the navigation logic of the application. Ah. Navigation is a very big part, basically one of the most important parts of the application. So for me, having um, a clean way to handle navigation that is very important. When I see this, I think it gives me a lot of positive feedback on the candidate or the code base that I'm looking at. 
Yeah, I agree also because now there is this uh, nav graph with Compose that helps a lot. It comes out of the box today a lot with the navigation graph. But that's also a trap because when it comes easy, maybe you don't pay that much attention. You need to remember to not leave it up to luck. No, don't just use it out of the box. Use your own abstraction to it mm -hmm. in case you want to change it later. Mm -hmm. And one thing we've learned of Android is that things change very often. So preparing for change is one of the best things you can do because you never know the future. By the way, another point that would be interesting, man, for you really will not be a problem see a project open Java. Oh, Java. It will not be a problem. It will just make me wonder. Uh, Java by itself is not the code smell. Java is not a bad language. We were surviving with Java for all these years. It will ring some alarm. Like why? Is it because you didn't take the time to learn what's happening in the Android for the past seven years? and you're just stuck in Java? Or is it just a conscious choice because you have an opinion and this opinion may, might be very useful for a team? Let's say you bring a developer that is consciously avoiding Kotlin for any reason. Maybe the reasoning behind would be enlightening to us. We'd be like, hmm, this guy has an opinion that even if we don't agree with the opinion, we like the mindset behind it. This critic mindset and we can use it to our advantage as a team. So I like to see it if it's conscious. I don't like to see it if it's out of um, carelessness, that mm. I never bothered to learn Kotlin. Exactly. This is not good. Or a strong uh, opinion like, I never use Java and I don't like, exactly. and I will never use it. Exactly. This, but, this is Chow Tutti. This is Chow Tutti, this is a red flag and we don't want to see this. Yes, a bit arrogance, yes, too much arrogance without even explaining why. Exactly. Still I'm thinking if you have put some comments in this video, I like this movement from the Syrian episode, why we should use Java instead of Kotlin this so far. I don't think we'll see a, co a comment like this. But if you make, if you find the reason, very good reason. You'll be the topic of the next video. You'll if you can find a good way to convince us to use Java instead of Kotlin, we'll make a video just for this comment, if it happens. We can make an interview with you guys. An interview. You convince us. Reach us out in the links below the video. Yeah. After the navigation, is there anything that more specific that you'd like to see? Okay, let's go more in the code. Uh, if it's Kotlin, the double bang for me is always an alarm because it means that you are not using properly Kotlin. Uh, too much extension function, not in the proper place, like would be also a problem. I would like to see, for example, if he's using Kotlin, if he understands the candidate, understand the nullability in general, because when you're coming from Java and you move to Kotlin, you have to understand. So there are red flags also in the code that can tell you Ah, there is a problem here. Let, let's dig probably in the interview what is the deep problem. Or in Java, not checking the nullability, for example. Ah. Bless you. Ah. He's dying. Ah. I want it. Man, uh, this is an allergy to the poor bank. It's normal. Okay. I agree with you. Totally agree with so you. So another point that you would like to raise? Another point that we like to see. If I see you using the how it's called the oh, I can't how it's called it's a library I don't like the paging if I see you using the paging library of Google for me that's already uh, I have an allergy to this library but if they force you some interview they ask you who's the paging library man I just get out of that interview Ooh. this is not the company for you paging by the way the paging two was very horrible <laughs> Uh, three might be a little bit, a bit better, but the PTSD from two made me not want to touch yeah, it. Two was very horrible. A fun, a fun topic for me. I'm not really serious about it, but maybe I'm a bit. Okay. I want to see paging as a feature. I can understand it and not the paging, the fake paging, by the way. The one that you bring all the data from network and that you show a few by few. I'm talking about the real paging, that the network is actually using paging. So you actually have a different attribute on the network call. Otherwise, Otherwise it doesn't make sense. What are you paging? Stop boots. Recycler view and lazy column actually does it for you. Yes. Just, just the panelists. Another things that I would not like, but multi-activity against the fragment. Now with compose, when they start using multi-activity because it's easy start activity finish. So it is. So you didn't really understand the stack of the support fragment manager or the fragment manager. I totally agree with you. Um, and it's actually very nice when you think that with one activity you can do everything today with Compose. It's a bit also weird for us that 
grew up with activities and frankly now to go to one single activity architecture nothing else it still feels a bit weird and you can really mess up with dependencies again yeah. because if you have something in the scope of your activity basically now it becomes the, your new application scope if you have just one activity and there is a yield view model that is doing some mess whatsoever. yes then you just can scope within the view models of the screen yes. so you can split the view models so it's a different it's a paradigm shift it's a different mindset more convenient but what does it actually change to your object graph the life cycle life cycle also I saw you touching some uh, mumbo jumbo code. You are doing some CICD die. Oh, I have a very good ah, one. Yeah. I have a good one. Using third party frameworks with no protection. No protection? Always use protection when you're putting third party libraries. Yeah, just, just using the modules that you bring into your project just the way they are. So you just access the code from your own code. And this creates a coupling. And not just a company, but now you're marrying the framework in the ways that you don't want to. So always use an interface in the middle. This is what I mean by protection, obviously. Use an interface, reverse the dependency to you. It's not spread out across your code. And of, as always, you get the benefit of switching the framework whenever you want. The like third-party this. library. I, like this. I will go with the, something that I see very often is the lot of logic in the view model. Guys, these view models are becoming too smart. They should be dumb. They should just uh, feed the view. So it should be like uh, uh, orchestrating the use cases, but not too much logic. I don't want to see this view model of 300 rows, guys. Come on, please. No, don't do this. And repository, as we said in video number one, if you don't using a cache, why are you putting a repository? It's nice, probably in the future. Guys, you will never. I like this. This is the best uh, highlight of the video so far. I enjoy this monologue of this. Monologue. Who, who, which view model hurt you? Man, there was this view model. There was, <laughs> there, there was a big view model. It was almost 1,000 rows. It was incredible. Man. We put everything in this custody view model. So in the past we had the GUD activities. Now we have the GUD view models. Model, yes. There's they a GUD. They think that they are smart and they just move the GUD. Maybe now we have covered most. Should we go to the nitpicking things, like small, small things, or have we omitted something big? Small things, I like UI. So if I see this nice application that is black and white without not even caring at all about some images, some nice, you not nice use UI because we know we see in gray, we are engineers, but at least I try. Like, I try to do this nicer. It's a you put effort, guys. I like the beauty. What about you? I think. Again, I have to think. Think of it. Think, think, think. Imagine you are in your room. You receive this candidate. Halla Gucci la Palam. Send you. Why is a, why is an Egyptian? Just a random name. Halla Gucci la Palam. Then Salem reached your laptop. You are installing. Open. The first thing that you see, you run it. First of all, you run it or not? I run it. You run it. Of course I run it. Correct. And now that you made me visualize, visualize. I know what I like to see. Nice, subtle, not too over the top, animations. The animations. It goes very hand in hand with your UI attention to your UI, but I want to specifically mention the animations because not, not, not too much. But if I see a shared animation, between one screen to the other. Oh, uh, if it's done properly, it's chef's kiss. It's the best thing you can do in an app to show that, hey, I'm in business. This is a good application. I spend the time to do something that has no value into the business side. You don't even notice it maybe the first time. You have to do it again. And you're like, ah, oh, this is why I was feeling this nice feeling. Okay, that was very fun, Pep. A perfect video to do on a cold night of December oh. here with a hot chocolate on the table that you probably cannot see talking about Android and I really enjoyed listening to your your insights. It's always a pleasure. Thank you and also you were really uh, inspiring. And so how do we wrap up man? We Is wrap up by something? saying that it's good to take, pay attention to the small things but also never forget the fundamentals in a code base. We value these things whenever we see a project. Now, whether we would interview people like this, whether we would give a take-home assignment, this is a topic for another video, but I know this happens in the industry. There are take-home assignments still. And 
I would like to touch on this topic at another point in a more serious note because <laughs> this is a very big one and right now it's mostly about talking about what we like to see as friends but also as professionals and what do we don't like to see, we'd like to avoid. Yes. See. Thank you man, it was a very nice one. Thank you. Thank you, you for guys. watching. This is the last moment that you will see this frame, the next frame. We have a different frame, we'll be in another studio, somewhere else. Studio. Another studio. Somewhere else. Somewhere else. Thank you for watching, have a lovely Christmas, and we'll see you with the next year. Thank you guys, take care, happy Christmas. How is in Greek, happy Christmas. Kala Christuyana. Buon Natale. He asked in Greek and then he said in Italian. I have to say both.